Hey, how goes it? Ken Bozek from thebitcoinpodcast.com as well as QuickBix, smartphone and tablet repair in West Berlin, New Jersey. Here to talk about Bitcoin and Bitcoin accessories. And today I'm here to talk about Bitcoin paper wallets. All right, let's get to it. Okay, as you can see, I'm using bitaddress.org. Bitaddress.org is a free website for making paper wallets, so go ahead and donate to the cause if you do decide to go ahead and use this website. Uh, I guess before I get into this, I should go over what a Bitcoin paper wallet really is. Uh, a Bitcoin paper wallet is a offline uh, storage option. Most you'll hear uh, people call that cold storage. Now, a Bitcoin paper wallet is a cold storage option, an offline option of storing your Bitcoin on the blockchain. So what you could go ahead and do is print your paper wallet, send Bitcoin to it and have it encrypted and kept away safely. Now, reasons you're going to want to use a Bitcoin paper wallet, uh, one, you don't want to leave your Bitcoin on an exchange like uh, Coinbase, Poloniex, uh, Bitfinex, anything like that. An exchange is not a wallet. An exchange has a wallet, but it is not a, just a wallet. So if you don't hold your keys and the exchange has access to your Bitcoin, it's their Bitcoin, not your Bitcoin. Uh, you're, you'll hear everybody say in the community, not your keys, not your Bitcoin. And that is true to the extent of you leaving it on an exchange. Now, uh, say you can't afford a hardware wallet, paper wallet, that's going to do just fine. And um, long term holding. So you don't buy, sell, spend your Bitcoin here and there. Uh, I would use a paper wallet for a long term holdings option, somewhere to put your Bitcoin away for a year or so. That way you're not tempted to sell it if it dips 10 percent or something, you know. Anyway, that's sort of what a paper wallet's for. Um, Bitaddress.org takes it one step and makes it simple, easy, and as you can see, it's clean, it's neat. Uh, we have single wallet, paper wallet, bulk wallet, brain wallet, uh, all different types of wallets. Uh, we're just going to stick with the paper wallet for now. All right, so uh, before you go ahead and use this website, there's some things I wanted to explain. Um, things that, you know, John McAfee kind of put the fear of God into me with. All right, so say we're using this, uh, this website right now and we're on the wi-fi we're on the internet somebody could be snooping with malware viruses of, of some extent this is at risk of being you know snooped on so you want to do this offline and that is possible so i'm going to show you how to use this website offline with no internet and to take it one step farther maybe do what i'm doing and then take that file that we're about to make and put it on a computer that never touched the internet all right, and uh, when you go ahead and print it, I'll show you, I couldn't, I can't physically connect to my printer, but you're gonna wanna physically connect to your printer offline. That way nobody could be watching what your printer's printing and then therefore have your private keys. So uh, to use bitaddress.org offline, here's what we're gonna have to do. Go up to file and then save page as, and then we can just hit save, save the desktop, done. Okay, so now we can go ahead and close this. All right, and we can go to our Wi-Fi. We can turn the Wi-Fi off. Now my computer has no internet access at all. There's no way for this. So anyway, what you would do is you would take this file, maybe even, like I said, put this file on a computer that never touched the internet. All right, so say this computer right now, this one has never touched the internet. We'll go ahead and open it. And there we go, we have a live website that we can use. Now, to take it one step farther, they would like you to move your mouse around and you know type in here some random stuff. That way you can kind of encrypt what you're doing and keep it even safer. All right, cool, should be enough. All right, so here goes the uh, single wallet. As you can see, it's kind of boring, kind of ugly, kind of lame. So we're gonna go to paper wallet we're going to generate one of these just to have it. All right, and what you can do with this uh, BIP38 encrypt, uh, you can go ahead and hit yes there. Go back and type in the one. All right, and, and here's the best part about this. Say you got your paper wallet and it was physically stolen. 
either out of your safe or out of your pocket. Well, when that person goes to sweep this wallet, it'll have a password on it. So if you were smart enough to make a copy of your paper wallet and have it in a safe in a bank or somewhere else, you can always go get your second paper wallet, snoop it, sweep it, whatever they want to call it, sweep it, and then you could type in your password and absorb the funds. All right, so I'm going to show you how to put a password on your paper wallet. Uh, the password is going to be the Bitcoin podcast. And we're going to go ahead and generate one paper wallet with an encrypted passphrase, the Bitcoin podcast. There we go. Awesome. We have our paper wallet. All right. Now, I want to show you something and I cover something that's very important when it comes to paper wallets. You want to make sure that you print this wallet before you send any funds to it. Okay. So right now we're offline. You're going to want to physically plug in your printer. I can't do that. So I'm going to turn my internet back on. Okay, so I learned this the hard way first time in with paper wallets. All right, you're going to go over here and you're going to double tap on it and you're going to save image as and you're going to save it as paper wallet. Done. Okay, so you're good, right? The paper wallet's are there. It's saved. You can, you can take your phone, send some Bitcoin to the address and close it. You're fine. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. I did this before and I'm still... I'm never going to get over it. Let's go ahead and uh, do it the right way. You're going to want to take a screenshot and screenshot your entire paper wallet. And I'll show you why. Here's the one we just saved. Do you see what's missing? Yeah. No private key. So I couldn't get my Bitcoin off because I closed the browser after I sent the funds to the private to the public address so there's some bitcoin out there just gone to the wind because of me and my stupidity so please don't do that make sure that you print your wallet before you go ahead and do anything else all right so now i can close this out and like you can see right here this is when you you know right click and hit save image as totally not going to help this is the one we need. So let's go ahead and print this and then I'll show you how to load funds and then I'll show you how to take some funds off the paper wallet with the encrypted password and all that. All right, so be right back. Okay, as you can see, we got the uh, paper wallet printed and ready to go. So I'm gonna show you how to send funds to the paper wallet that way you know your Bitcoin safely off the exchange or even off of like a software wallet like um, Jax or uh, Copay or any of those because your phone technically could be hacked and then that way the hacker would have access to your software wallet which has access to your Bitcoin. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and show you how to get away from those and get it on a paper wallet. So, get out my handy dandy Andy my Android phone, and we're going to go ahead and use uh, the copay. Can you see that? No. All right, we're going to use our copay wallet, and we're going to go ahead and send some funds here. Once you have your software wallet ready to go and your paper wallet printed, you can send your funds from one to the other. So here we go and just hit scan. We're going to scan the load and verify. We're going to send payment, switch it to USD, and I'll send 10 bucks. $10 to this address. All right, send. Oh, gotta slide it. All right, now the payment was sent. Awesome. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and take a second or two and let that uh, go from pending to confirmed, and then we can go ahead and take the uh, private key here scan that and sweep the wallet, enter our passcode, and then absorb the funds. So, be right back. Okay, a couple minutes later, and we have one confirmation. That should be enough to go ahead and sweep our paper wallet, so let's go ahead and use our Copay app to sweep our paper wallet. Hit scan again, make sure it only sees the spend or private key. Sweep paper wallet. It's encrypted. No, ah, I just stole this and now I can't do anything. 
I'm telling you guys, encrypt your stuff. So, password. The Bitcoin Podcast. Button. And that's how it's done, folks. May take a couple seconds, but you'll see, you'll see. Bam. Now, don't forget to go up here and tap sweep. Boop. And okay, now funds are transferred. So now, now I got my Bitcoin back. There you go. That's paper wallet, and that's how you would send money from your uh, software wallet to your paper wallet, and then from your paper wallet back to your software wallet. So that's a paper wallet, a Bitcoin paper wallet. It's an offline way to keep your Bitcoin safe. The best and safest way to keep your Bitcoin, in my opinion, if you can't afford a hardware wallet, a paper wallet is the next best thing. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please shoot me a thumbs up. If you dislike this video for any reason, please go ahead and shoot me that thumbs down. As always, please leave a comment in the comment section below telling me how I could have turned that thumbs down around in my next video. And don't forget to hit subscribe and click that alert bell next to subscribe so you don't miss my next video. And you do want to be the first to watch my videos because at the end, I like to give away Bitcoin every once in a while. So stay tuned and have a day.